The voice of Sherry. Do you understand? Hello and welcome back to Dorian Asian. You're with Gauri this morning, and we're moving on to our blast from the grassroots session. And today I have a guest with me, and uh, he's actually been here before, uh, so some of you probably know him. And uh, his name is Keith Nair. And he's a beer ambassador at GAB. Uh, hello, Keith. Hi, Gary. Hi. Uh, good to have you back here. Yes, good to be back. So, uh, what has changed since uh, the last time that you were here? Um, since the last time I was here, well, a lot of uh, a lot of things have been brewing. You could mm-hmm. say that. Okay. Um, a lot of changes um, and day-to-day operations still still remain. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you were telling me earlier that you're uh, that you're rooting for Argentina to win the World Cup. Uh yes, uh in context yes I am okay. for for this uh this World Cup this time around. Mm-hmm. Um and yeah I can say it's mu- it has been quite uh tiring staying up late at night. Oh, yeah. Of but course. All well worth it if the score goes your way, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh we're going to talk about beer today uh, specifically well the last time it was uh, more of a general overview of uh beverages and cocktails and all. So uh Maybe we'll start with a little beer history, if you can uh, tell us uh, how far back does uh, beer oh, go. Um, okay, well, uh, believe it or not, um, beer has been around for about more than 6,000 years ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it was uh, discovered in uh, Mesopotamia, uh, which is uh, modern-day Iraq. Okay. And uh, it was, I mean, just to, to cite a few examples of um, uh, how old beer really is, mm-hmm. um, even if you look at uh, the uh, early uh, Sumerians, uh, they have tablets and writings on the wall depicting beer recipes. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're familiar with the uh, epic Gil- uh, Gilgamesh, yeah. um, there, uh, there is a citation which uh, is basically the alewife uh, Sidori, so it's, I mean, I don't know whether she was a, a wife made out of ale. Oh, but, okay. <laughs> uh, but essentially, um, it's been around for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was discovered actually by accident. Uh, okay. uh, later on, I will explain how beer is actually made. Mm-hmm. Uh, but essentially, uh, bread uh, was left exposed okay. and uh, it got wet. Okay. And uh, yeast from the surroundings actually uh, fermented that bread. And that liquid was uh, then uh, drunk by straws back then. Oh, yeah, yeah, like right. bamboo straws. And um, it, they, they use it a lot in, uh, in places of worship, mm-hmm. uh, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until about uh, 15, 16, where, um, of course, uh, none other there than the uh, Duke of Bavaria, who actually uh, adopted the purity law. So the purity law basically uh, states that um, any beer mm-hmm. uh, governed by this law can only contain uh, four ingredients, which is uh, water, hops, barley, and uh, yeast. Okay. Yeah, so that. So those are the mo- the four main ingredients that go into the beer. Correct. Mm-hmm. So um, I mean, like like any other uh, alcohol, uh, mm-hmm. the, the principle of it is basically uh, you need a sugar, any okay. sugar compound. Uh, you add yeast to it, and um, what what it does is uh, yeast uh, actually eats up sugar. So okay. in fact, we even have um, um, like microorganisms in this room. Even mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, so yeast eats up sugar, and it produces uh, alcohol and uh, carbon dioxide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically, for if you're talking about beer, um, the most common uh, uh, grains which are used are usually barley. Okay. So if you, if you look at uh, at the market, you will see lots of beers with like different colors and uh, taste profiles. So mm. the color of beer actually comes from the degree of roasting. So think of it uh, as uh, as a coffee. You have your medium, light, and dark roast. Uh-huh, yep. uh-huh. So if uh, if it's a light roast, uh, that will determine the color of your beer. Mm-hmm. Yep. So uh, I I think we'll talk about the color maybe a, a bit later. Oh, okay. But, uh, I, I, sorry, sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> I, I just uh, wanted to ask you about this one article that I read where it mm-hmm. said that back then people actually uh, grew... Uh, Wheat and all, uh, mm. it wasn't uh, for just harvesting purposes. It was also actually uh, to make beer. Yeah, exactly. I and mean, they use it uh, for a lot of uh, ceremonies back then, and mm. uh, it was considered like a, a drink of the drink of the gods. Mm-hmm. Well, as opposed to you, um, the Romans, who actually thought beer is a drink of about bar- oh, okay. drink of barbarians, where only the elite class would actually drink wine. Okay. So, yeah. uh, so uh, what about the different types of beer that is available? Oh, okay. Uh, well, of course. Uh, um, wh- when it all started, it was mm-hmm. it was uh, known as like a very uh, uh, 
like premature beer, okay, if you will. Okay. Yeah, it, it was very, it was very basic because there uh-huh. were no uh, because they never really uh, used hops back then, so it oh. was just basically a uh, fermented uh, bread. Liquid from the bread, mm. yeah. So um, and it was very cloudy and murky. Mm-hmm. Uh, they didn't have any filtration process back then. Okay, um, so that's what you call the premature beer, is it? Yes. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you were saying. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, so, I interrupted. Uh, no, you. no worries. So uh, different types of beers. Uh, now you have uh, the the basic ones. Obviously, mm-hmm. your lagers. Mm-hmm. So um, after lagers, you have ales, mm-hmm. you have stouts, you mm-hmm. have uh, bock beers, you have uh, lambic beers. Okay. Um, and the list actually goes on for quite. A bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, what are some examples of lagers, ales? Um, okay, so the 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 prime difference uh, between a, a lager and ale uh, uh, it's actually the uh, the fermentation process. Okay. So, uh, so imagine a big uh, a steel or, or, or copper vat. Right. Mm-hmm. So when they add yeast into into their fermentation tank, mm-hmm. um, if it ferments at a lower temperature, meaning the yeast is more active uh, at the bottom of the tank. Okay. So once the yeast consumes all the sugar, it actually sinks to the bottom. So that is what we call bottom fermentation. Mm-hmm. So bottom fermented beers are usually lagers. Okay. And as opposed to top fermentation, uh, mm-hmm. meaning the yeast uh, after it consumes all the sugar in the fermentation tank, mm-hmm. it rises to the top. So okay. it o- it also means that the fermentation is a bit more rapid and mm-hmm. it happens at a higher temperature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for top fermented beers, uh, it's usually ales and stouts. So like uh like okay. f- like Guinness for example, mm-hmm. a lot of people like to drink a warm stout. And uh-huh. that's one of the reasons why, you know, because it's a, it's a top fermented uh, uh, ale. Okay. Yeah. But what about like if you look at Kilkenny and Guinness, mm-hmm. the difference uh, in the the, the color. Uh, okay, so col- color wise, yeah, it's uh, the the first thing is the de- the degree of roasting. Mm-hmm. So, like for example, for Guinness, it uses uh, what they call a chocolate malt. Okay. There is absolutely no chocolate in okay, it, okay. but uh, it's roasted uh, to uh, and they they coin it a chocolate malt. So it's a very mm-hmm. dark roast. Okay. Uh, whereas Kilkenny, it's uh, it's a medium to dark roast. So it's it sits somewhere in between uh, a Heineken and a Tiger and uh, uh, a Guinness. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, I think there's also another article that I read where they mm-hmm. said uh, beer back then also mm-hmm. uh, got their color from the barrels that they were stored in. Yep, exactly. So like uh, um, after the first uh, phase of fermentation, mm-hmm. uh, it's uh, what what you call a green beer. Mm-hmm. So before they add in, you know, uh, all so the so it's actually green. Uh, oh. It's yeah, li- you could say it's light uh, light green. You okay. know, before it becomes that golden color, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So when when they actually age it, like back then in like mm. oak barrels, for example, uh-huh. so uh, uh, the aging process uh, will will take maybe a couple of weeks or even a few mm-hmm. days sometimes. So the the flavor from the inside of the these oak barrels. Actually, impart flavor and uh, give it a bit more color, so it tends mm-hmm. to get uh, a darker color over a period of time. Okay, so uh, in comparison to the ingredients back then and today, mm-hmm. uh, are the ingredients different uh, in terms of what goes into the beer? Um, essentially, the ingredients uh, still remain the same. Okay, uh, but in terms of the advancement in technology we have today, it's it's mm-hmm. amazing. I mean, like for example, uh, back then people used to drink beer; uh, they used to drink more beer than water mm-hmm. because beer was cleaner than water. To okay. be honest. Okay. And the people just get sick by drinking, uh, you know, water from the streams. Mm-hmm. But today, um, if if you were to brew any any type of beer to that matter, uh, mm-hmm. the first ingredient, if you look at it, if you have water, you can actually condition it to however you want it to be. Mm-hmm. So you know the amount of minerals, you know, uh, how, what the kind of pH levels and and things like that, which mm-hmm. you can really uh, tailor make uh, a really pure uh, uh, water base. Yeah, before adding in your your hops mm-hmm. and uh, your yeast. Uh, I also read somewhere that mm-hmm. uh, it said you can actually uh, survive up to 10 days mm-hmm. by just drinking beer because it contains all the essential nutrients that uh, um, that you require. Okay, <laughs> I, I think I need to read that article too. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, yeah, essentially it's... it's, it's I wouldn't say it's entirely true. Mm-hmm. You do, you mm-hmm. can survive. You are right because the uh, the base it's uh, like malt, for example. If mm-hmm. you have, uh, I'm going to cite Guinness again. Uh-huh. Uh, so it, you uh, you actually have nutrients, and you know, uh, in fact, a pint of uh, Guinness will contain uh, less calories than a pint of orange juice. Mm, so okay. I mean, y- you can survive, but uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> okay. o- o- simply because of the alcohol content, which which will right. tend to dehydrate you over a couple of days mm, yeah. I guess that's kind of backfiring effect huh? it does have water in it mm-hmm. but at the same time it also dehydrates you true like like I mean if you look at uh, most of uh, the beers out in the market it's it's uh, the range is between uh, 4 to 6% mm-hmm. so if it's uh, 
five percent uh, are alcohol, meaning the other ninety five percent is water. Okay. Yeah, so that's where you know, all your flavors come from. Mm. Mm-hmm. So speaking about flavor, mm-hmm. uh, what uh, actually uh, gives flavor to the beer? Oh, uh, okay. There, there are a few things. Mm-hmm. Uh, mainly, um, if you look at the, uh, the the sugar base which you use, it could be malt. Uh, like for example, in countries like uh, Nigeria, they actually mm-hmm. use a uh, corn. So okay. it's basically once you have your your sugar compound, mm-hmm. uh, the other component is uh, it's hops. So okay. hops actually do three things to a beer. Uh, the first thing is it adds flavor, uh, particularly uh, the bitterness. Okay. Uh, the second thing is it actually uh, imp- imparts uh, a lot of aroma to your beer. Mm-hmm. And thirdly, it actually adds uh, it acts as a natural preservative. Mm-hmm. So it's only when they started using hops in beer when they actually realized it could last a lot longer. Oh, okay. Yeah. So hops is actually one of the uh, important ingredients yes, in making beer. Very important. So you know, mm. I mean, like you know, back then, you know, it uh, uh, when they use hops, it's the little hop flowers, mm-hmm. uh, which is very similar to um, marijuana plant, <laughs> if okay. you will. Yeah, okay. it looks like it, but mm. there's no relation whatsoever to that. Um, and uh, uh, today, uh, there are a lot of uh, advancements where we actually use like hop uh, concentrate. Okay. We use hop liquid. There's hop pellets and all that. So, so yeah. it's it's not really. Uh, the, the the plant anymore? Uh, no, it is, but oh, it's okay. uh, it's uh, processed and uh, um, it's oh, yeah. Oh, so for okay. in industrial brewing, you know, it, it really uh, helps a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's move on to the strength of a beer because we know that some uh, some beer, of course, uh, uh, is a lot stronger mm-hmm. than than the others. Some some are mild. So mm-hmm. what determines uh, the strength of um, the beer? Okay, well, uh, essentially, it's the the amount of uh, uh, your the ratio of your yeast because the more yeast you add in, the more sugar it uh, it consumes, mm-hmm. and the more the higher the alcohol content would be okay. yeah, because like for example if you take uh, 10 litres of uh, uh, wort which is basically uh, um, uh, barley which is boiled mm-hmm. and it's filtered out so mm-hmm. it's basically like liquid sugar so if you add uh, for example um, uh, half a kilo of like yeast mm-hmm. that yeast will only consume as much as it can after af- after which it actually dies and you know either floats to the top or sinks to the bottom okay. yeah so the, the more yeast you add the more uh, sugar it consumes and the higher the alcohol content uh, do you want to give us some examples maybe what are the example of a really strong beer or mm-hmm. re- a really uh, light ones um, okay like really uh, light beers mm-hmm. uh, would be because the, the range would be between 4 to uh, like for example a Guinness draft mm-hmm. is actually 4.2% uh, 4.2% yeah, okay. as opposed to uh, because a lot of people will say yeah, Guinness is a, it's a very strong uh-huh, uh, yeah. it, yes because the, the Guinness Foreign Extra Stout which mm-hmm. is the, the bottled Guinness it's about 6.8% mm-hmm. uh, last time it used to be about 8% uh, a couple oh, of years okay. ago and uh, yeah, b- the the main differences between these two it's mm-hmm. um, like if, if you go to a bar most people will, will be under the impression that if I have a cider like the strong move for example mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's it the, the alcohol content can't be as much as yeah, the Guinness. Yeah, that's true. But in actual fact, <laughs> Strongbow has, uh, if, if you have uh, a bottle of Strongbow, it's about uh-huh. 5.3%. Oh, okay. Yeah, as so that's actually higher than, it, yeah. than Guinness. In fact, yeah, it is oh, higher. Okay. So, you know, th- there's a lot of uh, uh, differences, but uh, ultimately, I, I feel that it's always a balance of flavours. Mm-hmm. So it's like really like what, what kind of uh, uh, taste profile are you comfortable with throughout the night? Yeah. Okay. So since you brought that up, maybe mm-hmm. uh, you can explain uh, what are the differences uh, between size Cider and, and beer. Um, okay, so uh, a cider uh, uh, basically it's uh, you can use uh, fruits as a base. Oh, so okay. yeah, and uh, uh, like for example, if I were to compare a uh, strongbow with um, let's say a tiger, mm-hmm. right? So a tiger would use uh, malt uh, or barley, right, in mm-hmm. the base. For strongbow, it uses about uh, fifty different uh, types of culinary apples. Oh, yeah. Okay. So in certain markets, they use uh, uh, different types of fruits. You can use mm. pears, el- elderflowers, and things like that. As okay. as long as you still keep to your base, which is sugar, right? Mm-hmm. So for for Strongbow, um, it's uh, they actually use a champagne yeast. So which is why if you if if you know a Strongbow, it tends to to give you that aroma of, of that of a white wine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, in terms of uh, uh, appearance, it's a lot clearer. And the strength, uh, there's a bit more bite to it because of mm-hmm. the, the malic acid from the apples. So it tends to give you a little bit more bite and uh, a lot of a citrus. When you say bite, you mean like... Like, um, like when if, you, if you take a, a swig, right? Uh-huh. And, and, you know, you, clo- you close your mouth and it's, it actually uh, releases all the, the, the uh, uh, carbon dioxide on, okay. your, on the tip of your tongue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as opposed to if you have a, a Guinness draft, which is like nice and creamy and uh-huh. uh, smooth. Yeah. So why do these? Why do people have a perception that ciders are usually for ladies? Um, I would I would strongly say that it's uh it's it's all because of the taste profile. Okay. You know? okay. Uh, because like for 
I'm I'm not sure on on uh, male and female taste profiles. Okay, but okay. essentially, like a, a cider, because you know, even uh, uh, I see a lot of, of of men drinking cider as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just how smooth and how well they adapt to flavors. Mm-hmm. So um, generally, like even if you look at like cocktails and like you know things like the Cosmopolitan, it's all mm-hmm. about you know if you have a nice fruity flavor, it actually goes well you know with uh, with our fle- female uh, uh, clientele. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, another thing that I wanted to ask you is. Uh, I think we spoke about this before. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to Guinness, there's the yeah. draft beer and the bottled beer. Mm-hmm. And of course, the draft uh, one tastes a lot better than, than the bottled one. So okay. why is that? Okay. Uh, the differences between a uh, um, Guinness draft and a uh, Guinness foreign extra stout, mm-hmm. uh, mainly uh, the first thing is the, the gases which are used. Mm-hmm. So like for Guinness draft, uh, it uses uh, a mixture of nitrogen and carbon dioxide. So uh, it's about 60 to 40, the ratio. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, the reason why you see a nice creamy hit on the Guinness draft is because the nitrogen molecule is about one third the size of a carbon dioxide molecule. Okay. So which is it's actually micro bubbles. So mm-hmm. it's not really cream, although it looks like cream. Mm-hmm. So the, that's the main difference uh, in terms of uh, the gases used for Guinness foreign extra stout. The one in the bottle, uh, it uses carbon dioxide. So which is why the molecules are a lot bigger, okay. and uh, you can see the, the the head of foam is not as smooth as the mm-hmm. Guinness draft. The second thing uh, would be the amount of hops used. So oh, okay. the you'll notice that the Guinness uh, from the bottle is slight. Uh, the bitterness is slightly higher compared to the draft. Yeah. And uh, basically between these two uh, brewing methods, uh, the alcohol content as well. Mm. So for Guinness, uh, by the bottle, six point eight, and draft it's about four point two. Okay. Yeah, which is why you know you love a Guinness draft compared <laughs> to a bottle, right? <laughs> does does uh, the ingredients also affect like the the creamy texture of the beer? Um, the the, the texture of the beer actually mm. comes from the from the gases used. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like for example, like a a, a Kilkenny mm-hmm. is also smooth and creamy. It's al- it's also because uh, they use a mixture of nitrogen and uh, carbon dioxide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, maybe this will be a little difficult for you to illustrate, but uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about the proper way to uh, serve beer. Oh, okay, sure. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, I know you don't have a glass now or, or a tap, but well, I can. If uh, we could just can, you know run through it. Okay, <laughs> so uh, uh, basically, it's uh, the the first thing because mm-hmm. okay, let's let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Okay. I mean. Beer, it's it's just a carbonated beverage in a mm-hmm. glass, right? Mm-hmm. So the only uh, uh, variables you have is your glass mm-hmm. and your tap, right? Yeah. So the first thing is that your glass must be a completely clean or a beer clean glass. Okay. Because the smallest like particle or you know even if it's a if it's a lipstick stain or or you know a little bit of oil from your plates that go into it, mm-hmm. it alters the beer entirely. Oh, right? okay. So it uh, first of all, of course, you need an extremely clean glass, mm-hmm. right? Um, the temperature must be right as well. So, okay. like for example, if you're serving a, a lager, let's say a Heineken, mm-hmm. uh, your glass needs to be chilled or frozen. Mm-hmm. Okay, but if if it's frozen, you should not have any watermarks on it, right? So and um. and the only friction you'll have is when you open your tap. Uh, you need to angle it depending mm-hmm. on the on the brew which you are pouring. Okay. And so different beer have different angles that um, you need to. Generally, most of it it's forty five degrees. Okay. Yeah, because okay. it it basically when uh, when you tilt the glass forty five degrees, mm. I mean it's not it's not as though you know we come up with a method <laughs> saying that oh step one is this. And right. two, you know we have a guideline. Okay. But essentially, the reason why you would you would tilt the glass uh, mm. when you're pouring it is just to reduce the friction so okay. that the the beer actually just flows into your glass. Uh, you know because okay. as if you pour it like in a straight angle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just imagine pouring a a can of Coke Mm -hmm. into a tall glass like at a straight angle. You know, it will just foam up and overspill, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that that is the main reason why we tilt the glass. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so when 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 you're done with your with your serve, it should you should always have a decent amount of uh, foam or a head of foam. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, if you look at the the commercial pictures anywhere around the world, Mm -hmm. every beer should has always a certain amount of uh, beer and a certain amount of foam. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So and the the foam in uh, in fact it actually acts as a think of it as a bottle cap on a on a bottle of beer or a bottle of soda. Okay. It is protection. Okay. So mm. it protects uh, uh carbon dioxide from escaping your beer, mm-hmm. and it uh prevents oxygen from getting into your beer. Okay. Right. So it's it's always it's always good to drink never drink without protection. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that that's a new one. <laughs> so uh the the foam actually seals the taste of the beer. Yes. Okay. Correct. 
So since you brought up the lipstick part, mm-hmm. I, I just want to touch on that mm-hmm. because I love to wear lipstick. Mm-hmm. So when I drink beer with lipstick, mm-hmm. does it actually uh, alter the taste of the beer? Um, well, it depends. On, okay, now we're, we're talking about how we're drinking beer because okay. like, yeah, m- most like you can w- always tell the difference between a beer drinker and a, and a non-beer drinker mm-hmm. by the way they drink their beer. Uh, so like most of the time, like if you're not too, it's quite hard for me to explain it. I okay, have to show it okay. to you, but uh, I, w- I will give it a shot. So basically, uh, um, if, if I were to pass you a, a glass of beer, right? Mm-hmm. And there's, let's say, three centimeters of foam. Mm-hmm. So the way you should actually drink it is actually put it against your, your lower lip mm-hmm. and kind of like pour the liquid down. It, uh, what okay. most people do, which I realize, is they actually bite the top of the foam when they drink it. Oh. So like you know when they when they sip your beer, your beer, yeah. So they actually bite the protection. So you know it's okay. it, it defeats the purpose. So like halfway through your beer, you notice that there's the the head of foam is non-existent anymore. That's oh. when it starts to oxidize a lot faster mm-hmm. and the temperature increases a lot faster. And then it, that is when you start tasting sour or off flavors in your beer. And that you actually like, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> so you should always <laughs> keep the head of foam there and you know, uh-huh. so your beer remains uh, chilled at all times and you always get uh, 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 a good quality uh, taste. So never, never bite the foam. Never bite the foam. <laughs> it's like biting the cap off your bottle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, now that we talked about uh, the correct way to drink beer, is there anything that mm. you want to uh, add to that? Um, the Any cra- other tricks of, on how to um, okay. savor your beer? How to savor your beer? Okay, There's, you should drink it the right way. It mm-hmm. should be at the right temperature. Mm-hmm. And you should always, um, um, when when you're when you're drinking your beer, right? Uh, always remember to order um, the right amount okay. to to suit your your pace, mm, basically. Because, mm-hmm. like for example, if if I if I love a a, a, a tiger draft or a Heineken draft, mm-hmm. and um, I'm it's it I'm having a meal, mm-hmm. I wouldn't order a full pint. I'll okay. probably have like you know maybe a half pint, you know something which because uh, if you have a full pint, you know you won't be drinking as fast as right. you would, mm-hmm. and the temperature will still increase no matter what, especially okay. in in this climate so mm-hmm. you know it's it as long as you you pace yourself and you order the right amount mm-hmm. you'll always have a chilled beer okay yeah so how how do you tell whether the beer is is a good beer or not are there any indicators uh well okay the first thing will definitely be the appearance so okay. yeah like for example uh if you look at uh um, the most common uh factor of of seeing uh, an off beer by mm-hmm. appearance is always the glass like uh for example if you look at um uh, any lager like heineken or tiger to that matter if the glass is not clean, mm-hmm. you will notice that the CO2 bubbles actually stuck on the side of the glass. So most so you see like little bubbles on the side? Yeah, and it's oh. actually on the glass. Okay. You know? okay. A- and of course, in, in the glass itself, you can see the bubbles going up, right? Mm-hmm. But you will see like patches stuck on the side of oh, the glass. Okay. So most, most people will, will always be under the impression that, oh, if I see bubbles in my beer, that means it's fresh. Uh. In actual fact, <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, the CO2 bubbles actually mm. cling onto dirt. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's for lagers because it's very clear. You can mm-hmm. see that. So it's because it's pretty transparent. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So like you know, and and if you if you grab that glass and mm-hmm. you just uh, knock it on the on the table, mm-hmm. you will notice that it just disappears and it just floats to the top, oh. which I don't recommend you do anyway. <laughs> uh, for 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 beers which are uh, made with uh, uh, mix uh, mixed gases mm-hmm. like uh, Guinness and Kilkenny, you will notice that if the glass is dirty, you will see white streaks on the side of the glass. It oh, looks It okay. kind of looks like uh, milk stains. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that uh, it, that usually happens when either your your bartender is wiping the glass mm. with uh, not such a clean cloth. Okay. Yeah. Then you can see like swirls on the inside of the glass. Mm. Yeah. And of course, you know the the second thing to tell between a, a good and bad beer is obviously the uh, taste. Mm-hmm. So uh, immediately, you know, when you get when you can detect an off flavor. I mean, we are not as as uh, picky as uh, wine connoisseurs, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Uh, essentially, you will be able to to detect whether it's an off flavor or not. The first the first thing would be uh, the level of carbonation, which mm-hmm. is you know it's always yeah okay this is a flat beer you know or, or this beer you know it is too gassy mm-hmm. you know and obviously the the flavors like you know if you if you detect like a a, um, a sour flavor to it mm-hmm. or usually what happens is especially with bottle beers mm-hmm. it's uh, it tends to have this uh, uh, bitter like metallic taste that usually happens when it gets uh, light struck. So okay. light struck is usually uh, you'll notice a lot of bottles, uh, beer bottles in the market. It's either using an amber or a dark coloured bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, that's because um, when when sunlight uh, strikes a bottle, it tends to to change the flavour of it, like almost like within uh, within a half an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even if you store it in your fridge with lights, after a period of time, it still can get light struck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, 
I'm really curious to know if you have ever uh, sent back a beer because you you thought it it wasn't up to uh, the standard. Oh, oh, many times. Many times. Many times. Yeah, I, I saw that coming. <laughs> I, uh, I I tend to. I mean, I of of course I don't mm. uh, uh, do it very authoritative. Yeah. But uh, um, I I tend to you know when especially when I when I when I find myself in a place where I'm on the outside of the bar and mm-hmm. I get served a really terrible uh, okay. Pint, okay I the reason why I'm so particular about it is because you know I I used to be behind the bar mm-hmm. and I know exactly how right. it, it should be right okay. so and and the the only thing which especially with the, with the amount we you know we we pay for beers in this country mm-hmm. you know it's mm-hmm. you you should. You deserve a quality pint. You right. know, you, sh- you always deserve a quality pint. So there's no no compromise to it. Because you think about it this way. I mean, if 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 I'm a consumer who's trying out any brand for the first time, mm-hmm. um, let's say it's a it's a Kilkenny or it's a Strongbow, and it's a I get it uh, served in a poor in a in, in a dirty glass mm-hmm. or it's a poor serve. Immediately, my first impression on that brand is that oh, I don't like this flavor. Oh, okay. You know, and and my perception of of that product and that brand is just gone within right. a, with a single serve. You can actually make or break any brand. Right. Yeah. So the bartender actually plays a very important role in being the mediator between the brand and the customer. Yes, exactly. I mean, like like through the line. I mean, like if um, like breweries all around the world, you know, they have uh, a stringent like quality cues from brewery all the way until it leaves the mm-hmm. brewery gates. Mm-hmm. That's when uh, handling comes into play and. And when he reaches the, uh, any bar or restaurant, mm-hmm. that person who is serving that mm-hmm, brand mm-hmm. will make or break your brand. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, actually, that's all the time that we have uh, for today. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, Keith, for joining us and sharing all uh, the tricks and uh, some also some really interesting facts uh, on beer. Thanks, Gary. It's been a pleasure. So, uh, as always, uh, don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and uh, catch our replay uh, of the show later at 10 o'clock. Uh, Stay tuned.